Emmanuel Joseph C. is the 3rd of May 1748 to the 20th of June 1836, most commonly known as the Abbé Sillas (French: Sies, was a French Roman Catholic abbé, clergyman, and political writer. He was one of the chief political theorists of the French Revolution, and also played a prominent role in the French Consulate and First French Empire. His 1789 pamphlet What is the Third Estate? became the Manifesto of the Revolution, helping to transform the Estates General into the National Assembly in June 1789. He was offered a position on the French Directory, but turned it down. After becoming a director in 1799, he was among the instigators of the coup d'état of 18 Brumaire the 9th of November, which brought Napoleon Bonaparte to power. He also coined the term, sociology in an unpublished manuscript, and made significant theoretical contributions to the nascent social sciences. <inaudible> Early life Sillas was born on 3 May 1748 as the fifth child of Honoré and Annabelle Sillas in the town of Fréges in southern France. His father was a local tax collector who made a humble income, and while the family had some noble blood, they were commoners. His earliest education came by way of tutors and of the Jesuits. He also spent some time at the College of the Doctrinaires of Draguignan. He originally wanted to join the military and become a soldier, but his frail health, combined with his parents' piety, led him instead to pursue a religious career. The vicar general of Fregis offered aid to Sillas, because he felt he was obliged to his father. <laughs> education Sillas spent ten years at the Seminary of St. Sulpice in Paris. There, he studied theology and engineering to prepare himself to enter the priesthood. He quickly gained a reputation at the school for his aptitude and interest in the sciences, combined with his obsession over the new philosophic principles and dislike for conventional theology. Sillas was educated for priesthood in the Catholic Church at the Sorbonne. While there, he became influenced by the teachings of John Locke, Condillac, Canet, Mirabeau, Turgot, the Encyclopédistes, and other Enlightenment political thinkers, all in preference to theology. In 1770, he obtained his first theology diploma, ranking at the bottom of the list of passing candidates, a reflection of his antipathy toward his religious education. In 1772, he was ordained as a priest, and two years later he obtained his theology license. Topic. Religious career Despite Sia's embrace of Enlightenment thinking, he was ordained to the priesthood in 1773. In spite of this, he was not hired immediately. He spent this time researching philosophy and developing music until about a year later in October 1774 when, as the result of demands by powerful friends, he was promised a canonry in Brittany. Unfortunately for Sillas, this canonry went into effect only when the preceding holder died. At the end of 1775, Sillas acquired his first real position as secretary to the Bishop of Tregier where he spent two years as deputy of the diocese. It is here that he sat in the estates of Brittany and became disgusted with the immense power the privileged classes held. In 1780, the Bishop of Tregier was transferred to the Bishopric of Chartres, and Sillas accompanied him there as his vicar general, eventually becoming a canon of the cathedral and chancellor of the Diocese of Chartres. Due to the fact that the Bishop of Tregier had high regards for Sillas, he was able to act as a representative of his diocese in the upper chamber of the clergy. It was during this time that Sillas became aware of the ease with which nobles advanced in ecclesiastical offices compared to commoners. In particular, he was resentful of the privileges granted to the nobles within the church system and thought the patronage system was a humiliation for commoners. While remaining in ecclesiastical offices, Sias maintained a religious cynicism at odds with his position. By the time he took his orders to enter priesthood, Sias had freed himself from all superstitious sentiments and ideas. Even when corresponding with his deeply religious father, Sias showed a severe lack of piety for the man in charge of the diocese of Chartres. It is theorized that Sillas accepted a religious career not because he had any sort of strong religious inclination, but because he considered it the only means to advance his career as a political writer. <laughs> what is the Third Estate? 
In 1788, Louis XVI of France proposed the convocation of the Estates General of France after an interval of more than a century and a half. This proposal, and Jacques Necker's invitation to French writers to state their views as to the organization of society by estates, enabled Sillas to publish his celebrated January 1789 pamphlet, Kcek le tirs à tot, What is the Third Estate? He begins his answer. What is the Third Estate? Everything. What has it been hitherto in the political order? Nothing. What does it desire to be? Something. This phrase, which was to remain famous, is said to have been inspired by Nicholas Chamfort. The pamphlet was very successful, and its author, despite his clerical vocation which made him part of the first estate, was elected as the last the 20th of the deputies to the third estate from Paris to the Estates General. He played his main role in the opening years of the Revolution, drafting the Declaration of the Rights of Man and of the Citizen, expanding on the theories of national sovereignty, popular sovereignty, and representation implied in his pamphlet, with a distinction between active and passive citizens that justified suffrage limited to male owners of property. Sias's pamphlet incited a radical reaction from its audience because it involved the "...political issues of the day and twisted them in a more revolutionary direction." In the third chapter of the pamphlet, Sias proposed that the third estate wanted to be something. But he also stated that, in allowing the privileged orders to exist, they are asking to become the least thing possible. The usage of such rhetoric in his pamphlet appealed to common causes to unite the audience. At the same time it influenced them to move beyond simple demands and take a more radical position on the nature of government. In this case, the radical position taken by the Third Estate created a sense of awareness that the problems of France were not simply a matter of addressing royal tyranny, but that unequal privileges under the law had divided the nation. It was from this point that the revolution's struggle for fair distribution of power and equal rights began in earnest. Topic. Impact on the revolution Sias's pamphlet played a key role in shaping the currents of revolutionary thought that propelled France towards the French Revolution. In his pamphlet, he outlined the desires and frustrations of the alienated class of people that made up the Third Estate. He attacked the foundations of the French ancient regime by arguing the nobility to be a fraudulent institution, preying on an overburdened and despondent bourgeoisie. The pamphlet voiced concerns that were to become crucial matters of debate during the convocation of the Estates General of 1789. Whereas the aristocracy defined themselves as an élite ruling class charged with maintaining the social order in France, Sia saw the Third Estate as the primary mechanism of public service. Expression of radical thought at its best, the pamphlet placed sovereignty not in the hands of aristocrats but instead defined the nation of France by its productive orders composed of those who would generate services and produce goods for the benefit of the entire society. These included not only those involved in agricultural labor and craftsmanship, but also merchants, brokers, lawyers, financiers and others providing services. Sias challenged the hierarchical order of society by redefining who represented the nation. In his pamphlet, he condemns the privileged orders by saying their members were enjoying the best products of society without contributing to their production. Sias essentially argued that the aristocracy's privileges established it as an alien body acting outside of the nation of France, and deemed noble privilege, treason to the Commonwealth. Sias's pamphlet had a significant influence on the structural concerns that arose surrounding the convocation of the Estates General. Specifically, the Third Estate demanded that the number of deputies for their order be equal to that of the two privileged orders combined, and most controversially, that the state's general vote, not by orders, but by heads. The pamphlet took these issues to the masses and their partial appeasement was met with revolutionary reaction. By addressing the issues of representation directly, Sias inspired resentment and agitation that united the Third Estate against the feudalistic traditions of the ancient regime. As a result, the Third Estate demanded the reorganization of the Estates General, but the two other orders proved unable or unwilling to provide a solution. Sias proposed that the members of the First and Second Order join the Third Estate and become a united body to represent the nation as a whole. He not only suggested an invitation, however, but also stated that the Third Estate had the right to consider those who denied this invitation to be in default of their national responsibility. The Third Estate adopted this measure on 5 June 1789, by doing so, they assumed the authority to represent the nation. 
This radical action was confirmed when they decided to change the name of the Estates General to the National Assembly, indicating that the separation of orders no longer existed. Topic: <inaudible> Assemblies, Convention, and the Terror. Although not noted as a public speaker, he spoke rarely and briefly. C has held major political influence, and he recommended the decision of the Estates to reunite its chamber as the National Assembly, although he opposed the abolition of tithes and the confiscation of church lands. His opposition to the abolition of tithes discredited him in the National Assembly, and he was never able to regain his authority. Elected to the Special Committee on the Constitution, he opposed the right of absolute veto for the King of France, which Honoré Mirabeau unsuccessfully supported. He had considerable influence on the framing of the departmental system, but, after the spring of 1790, he was eclipsed by other politicians, and was elected only once to the post of fortnightly president of the Constituent Assembly. Like all other members of the Constituent Assembly, he was excluded from the Legislative Assembly by the ordinance, initially proposed by Maximilien Robespierre, that decreed that none of its members should be eligible for the next legislature. He reappeared in the Third National Assembly, known as the National Convention of the French Republic September 1792 to September 1795. He voted for the death of Louis XVI, but not in the contemptuous terms sometimes ascribed to him. He participated to the Constitution Committee that drafted the Girondin Constitutional Project. Menaced by the reign of terror and offended by its character, C. is even abjured his faith at the time of the installation of the cult of reason. Afterwards, when asked what he had done during the terror, he famously replied, J'ai vécu. I lived. Ultimately, C. has failed to establish the kind of bourgeois revolution he had hoped for, one of representative order, devoted to the peaceful pursuit of material comfort. His initial purpose was to instigate change in a more passive way, and to establish a constitutional monarchy. According to William Sewell, see his pamphlet set, "...the tone and direction of the French Revolution, dot but its author could hardly control the revolution's course over the long run." Even after 1791, when the monarchy seemed to many to be doomed, see is "...continued to assert his belief in the monarchy." which indicated he did not intend for the revolution to take the course it did. During the period he served in the National Assembly, C. is wanted to establish a constitution that would guarantee the rights of French men and would uphold equality under the law as the social goal of the revolution. He was ultimately unable to accomplish his goal. <laughs> <laughs> Directory After the execution of Robespierre in 1794, C. is re-emerged as an important political player during the constitutional debates that followed. In 1795, he went on a diplomatic mission to The Hague, and was instrumental in drawing up a treaty between the French and Batavian republics. He resented the constitution of the year three enacted by the Directory, and refused to serve as a director of the Republic. In May 1798, he went as the plenipotentiary of France to the court of Berlin, in order to try to induce Prussia to ally with France against the Second Coalition. This effort ultimately failed. His prestige grew nonetheless, and he was made director of France in place of Jean-Francois Rubel in May 1799. Nevertheless, C is considered ways to overthrow the Directory, and is said to have taken in view the replacement of the government with unlikely rulers such as Archduke Charles of Austria and Karl Wilhelm Ferdinand of Brunswick, a major enemy of the Revolution. He attempted to undermine the Constitution, and thus caused the revived Jacobin Club to be closed while making offers to General Joubert for a coup d'état. Second Consul of France The death of Joubert at the Battle of Novi and the return of Napoleon Bonaparte from the Egypt campaign put an end to this project, but C. has regained influence by reaching a new understanding with Bonaparte. In the coup of 18 Brumaire, C. is and his allies dissolved the Directory, allowing Napoleon to seize power. Thereafter, C. is produced the constitution which he had long been planning, only to have it completely remodeled by Bonaparte, who thereby achieved a coup within a coup. Bonaparte's constitution of the year 8 became the basis of the French consulate of 1799-1804. The Corps Légilatif appointed Bonaparte, C. is, and Roger Ducos as consuls of the French Republic. In order to once again begin the function of government, these three men took the oath of 
inviolable fidelity to the sovereignty of the people, to the French Republic, one and indivisible, to equality, liberty and the representative system." Although Sillas had many ideas, a lot of them were disfavored by Bonaparte and Roger Ducos. One aspect that was agreed upon was the structure of power. A list of active citizens formed the basis of the proposed political structure. This list was to choose one-tenth of its members to form a communal list eligible for local office, from the communal list, one-tenth of its members were to form a departmental list, finally, one further list was made up from one-tenth of the members of the departmental list to create the national list. This national list is where the highest officials of the land were to be chosen. Sias envisioned a tribunate and a college des conservateurs to act as the shell of the national government. The tribunate would present laws and discuss ratification of these laws in front of a jury. This jury would not have any say in terms of what the laws granted consist of, rather whether or not these laws passed. The Collège des Conservateurs would be renewed from the national list. The main responsibility of the Collège des Conservateurs was to choose the members of the two legislative bodies, and protect the constitution by right of absorption. By this curious provision, the college could forcibly elect to its ranks any individual deemed dangerous to the safety of the state, who would then be disqualified from any other office. This was a way to keep a closer eye on anyone who threatened the state. The power of the College des Conservateurs was extended to electing the titular head of government, the Grand Elector. The Grand Elector would hold office for life but have no power. If the Grand Elector threatened to become dangerous, the College des Conservateurs would absorb him. The central idea of Sia's plan was a division of power. Topic: <inaudible> Napoleonic era and final years. Sia soon retired from the post of provisional consul, which he had accepted after 18 Brumaire, and became one of the first members of the Senat Conservateur, acting as its president in 1799. This concession was attributed to the large estate at Crones that he received from Napoleon. After the plot of the Rue saint nicaise in late December 1800, Sias defended the arbitrary and illegal proceedings whereby Napoleon rid himself of the leading Jacobins. During the era of the First Empire, 1804-1814, Sias rarely emerged from his retirement. When Napoleon briefly returned to power in 1815, Sias was named to the Chamber of Peers. In 1816, after the Second Restoration, Sias was expelled from the Academy of Moral and Political Sciences by Louis XVIII. He then moved to Brussels, but returned to France after the July Revolution of 1830. He died in Paris in 1836 at the age of 88. Topic. Contribution to social sciences In 1795, Sias became one of the first members of what would become the Academy of Moral and Political Sciences of the Institute of France. When the Académie Française was reorganized in 1803, he was elected in the second class, replacing, in Chair 31, Jean Sylvain Bailly, who had been guillotined on 12 November 1793 during the Reign of Terror. However, after the Second Restoration in 1815, Sias was expelled for his role in the execution of King Louis XVI, and was replaced by the Marquis of Lally Tollendal, who was named to the Academy by a royal decree. In 1780, Sias coined the term sociology in an unpublished manuscript. The term was used again fifty years later by the philosopher Auguste Comte to refer to the science of society, which is known in English as sociology. Topic. Personal life Sias was always considered intellectual and intelligent by his peers and mentors alike. Through the virtue of his own thoughts, he progressed in his ideologies from personal experiences. Starting at a young age, he began to feel repulsion towards the privileges of the nobility. He deemed this advantage gained by noble right as unfair to those of the lower class. This distaste he felt for the privileged class became evident during his time at the estates of Brittany where he was able to observe, with dissatisfaction, domination by the nobility. Aside from his opinions towards nobility, Sias also had a passion for music. He devoted himself assiduously to cultivating music as he had plenty of spare time. Along with cultivating music, Sias also enjoyed writing reflections concerning these pieces. Sias had a collection of musical pieces he called. Le catalogue de ma petite musique. 
Although Sillas was passionate about his ideologies, he had a rather uninvolved social life. His journals and papers held much information about his studies but almost nothing pertaining to his personal life. His associates referred to him as cold and vain. In particular, Charles Maurice de Talleyrand Perigord remarked that, "...men are in his eyes chess pieces to be moved, they occupy his mind but say nothing to his heart." See also What is the Third Estate, a political pamphlet written by Sillas Les Neufsers, a Parisian Masonic lodge of which Sillas was a member Footnotes References Bibliography Bochko, Bronislaw. The Social Contract of the French, Sillas and Rousseau. Journal of Modern History, 1988, S98S125, in JSTOR. Foré, Christine. Representative Government or Republic? Sillas on Good Government. In the Ashgate Research Companion to the Politics of Democratization in Europe, Concepts and Histories, 2008, pp. 75+. Ferret, François, and Mona Ozouf, eds. A Critical Dictionary of the French Revolution 1989, pp. 313–23 Hibbert, Christopher 1982. The Days of the French Revolution. New York, William Morrow. This article incorporates text from a publication now in the public domain, Chisholm, Hugh, ed. 1911. C. is, Emmanuel Joseph. Encyclopædia Britannica. 25 11th ed. Cambridge University Press. Meng, John J. Review of, C. Is His Life and His Nationalism by Glyndon G. Van Dusen. The Catholic Historical Review, Vol. 19, No. 2 July 1933. JSTOR. Retrieved of February 2010. Sewell, Jr., William H. 1994. A Rhetoric of Bourgeois Revolution, The Abbé C. Is and What Is the Third Estate? Durham and London, Duke University Press. Van Dusen, Glyndon G. 1933, reprint 1968. Sillas, His Life and His Nationalism. New York, AMS Press, Primary Source Sillas, Comte Emmanuel Joseph, M. Blondel, and Samuel Edward Finer, eds. What is the Third Estate? London, Pall Mall Press, 1963. <laughs> external links. Emmanuel Joseph C. is at Find a Grave Emmanuel Joseph C. is, What is the Third Estate? Excerpts <laughs>